Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over a few items and we're going to start with this lamp that belongs to a friend of mine. She was tired of this gold and dark color and tassel and she wanted it to be made over in a farmhouse style. So that's what I'm going to be working on. And um, this camera frame, I again, I don't know what's going on with my with my camera uh, last time it was sound which was terrible and this time it's the frame so I couldn't get this in a bigger frame so I, I'm just gonna have to work with what I've got so I'm sorry that um, that it's in a smaller frame I hope that once it uh, goes online that it's a, a larger frame but I seriously doubt it so um, if you're trying to watch on a small screen, you might want to move to a bigger screen because um, I'm just not happy with this frame at all. Uh, but I'm going to give this this uh, lamp uh, two coats of the color cotton. And uh, like I said, she wanted it more farmhouse style, so uh, white was, was the way to go, I think. So um, I'm giving this two coats of the color cotton and um, and then I will uh, put a clear matte finish on it. Now I could take this outside and spray it, uh, or I could just brush on a top coat. Or um, actually, I'm I'm not going to do a clear matte finish on this. I'm actually going to just use a a clear wax on this one. So strike that. It's going to have clear wax on it. Um, but I give this two coats of the color cotton and uh and then uh clear coat it or clear wax it rather and now i'm uh, giving this lampshade uh two coats of the color cotton both inside and out and if if you didn't know you can paint lampshades and this one was in such good condition that um, i hated to just throw it out and get another lampshade so i just decided to paint it so it's a little tedious to paint the inside but um but it worked out so it just took a little longer on the inside but it covered pretty well so i did two coats on this one and then i um then i also put a clear wax on this now i've never clear waxed a lampshade before so um i'm gonna just let it dry overnight and see how it dries i think it's gonna work out just fine it seemed like it so um I'll know for sure tomorrow, but right now I think it worked out. So now I'm just taking some fine grit sandpaper and distressing down to that darker color. Now uh, I'm using some Dollar Tree sandpaper here, and it is very fine. Uh, but th this is one of the few things that I think is not a good deal at the Dollar Tree. It was my first and last time buying it because it just falls apart. You can't get through one uh, through one project without it just falling all apart. So that's not a good value in my opinion. Uh, but there's so many things at the Dollar Tree that are, but this one to me is just not, not working at all. As you can see, it's just kind of crumbling in my hands. So... Uh, sometimes it's worth paying a little bit more and in this case I would rather buy good sandpaper uh, but I give this a good uh, distressing and then uh, like I said I did use a clear wax on this and here I'm also distressing that finial on top and I think that simple makeover made a really big difference in this lamp now the next item that we're going to be working on is another one of my friends um an item she's actually my neighbor and uh, she has a lot of gold in her house and she said she's over the gold also uh, she wants to go more country so uh, the colors that she's chosen are gray and, and white so we're going with an uh, she's going with like an off-white and some gray so uh, I decided that this compo would be a good item to make look like concrete. So that will go with her gray color scheme. And um, I think it'll look really good on this compo. 
So what I did was I took the color mineral, or not mineral, this is the color, that's a Waverly color. This is French linen in Dixie Belle. And I'm giving this uh, uh, two coats, but what I've done with this paint is mixed it half and half with baking soda. And that will give it uh, plenty of texture uh, because I'm gonna be white waxing this one. So um, I give this two coats of uh, this mixture. And like I said, I, I mixed about half baking soda and half paint. And a lot of times I'll kind of pounce that on and give it more texture. In this case, I'm just brushing it on. I just want it to have a rough finish so that when I do that white wax, it'll settle into the um, texture. I wanted to let you guys know that uh, that my sister Carla has started a YouTube channel where she does paper crafts and she just has all kinds of paper crafts that she does uh, not just uh, scrapbooking type but also decor and just different different items so uh, she just started it, and she has like three videos that she's posted already, and I'm going to link one of them in my description, and I would appreciate you going and watching her, and, and uh, if it's something you like, subscribing to her channel, uh, because she's just going to be posting lots of videos, so um, I think she's very talented. She's actually an artist. Uh, but, uh, art is just not something that goes well on, on, uh, YouTube because there's so many artists, uh, but she does also craft, uh, and so if you could look at her video and see what you think, I would appreciate it. So, like I said, once I give this two coats of, uh, of that textured paint, uh, then I'm gonna, uh, and let that dry then i'm gonna gonna use some white wax on this and when you use the white wax you just brush it on and wipe it off so as you can see here this pedestal that on the bottom of the compote uh, is very detailed and i think that will be a really good place to put the the um white wax and it settle in as you can see here i'm checking to make sure i haven't missed any uh, places and if you've never painted um, small items on a turntable like this or Lacey Susan rather uh, it it works really well so if you have a turntable that you can use when you're painting it's very helpful so here I am adding that white wax and then wiping it off now make sure that your paint is very dry before you do this because if you're not careful you'll pull some paint off and if you're not comfortable with that not happening, then also you can spray this with some sort of clear finish and let that dry before you do this coat. And uh, that will help this uh, to stick better without coming off. But I'm just doing small sections at a time and not putting too much wax on and I don't have the problem with it coming off. And as you can see here, that white wax really settles into this detail and and it really makes a big difference in this and, and it makes it look like concrete it really does look like concrete when you're finished and again i apologize for this frame uh, but it looks like that's what we're stuck with here um, then the next item that i'm going to be making over is uh, this planter and it's just a metal planter and again gold and she she was over the gold so um, I'm gonna paint this in the color buttercream because she wanted the off-white so I give this two coats of the color buttercream both inside and out and it's okay that it's painted inside because she isn't gonna put uh, real plants in this uh, it's just going to be de decor for inside, so like I said, I give this two coats of the color buttercream. And then once it's uh, dry, I do some light distressing on some of the high spots. Uh, she 
isn't used to the rustic finish. She's trying to slowly get into that, but too much distress at one time, I think, will be a little hard for her to accept. So um, I'm just going to do some light distressing on it, and then I'll use a clear wax on this also. Now, I could use a spray uh, finish on it, or I could do a top coat, just a brush on top coat, but uh, I just chose to do the clear wax here. And in my last video, I mentioned that I'm going to do uh, an ornament or some kind of Christmas uh, item at the end of each of my videos. And um, so we're going to do an ornament today. Actually, going to do a couple of them. Um, but I find that I decorate my Christmas tree in, um, in faith-related items, and I find that it's really hard to find enough to fill your tree. I think that's very sad that there's very few, uh, but it is what it is, and I've just learned that I have to make mine. So, um, so I generally, when I do, I. Uh, ornaments like this, I generally use a piece of Luan that uh, my husband has cut up or a uh, bee board uh, or some type of thin wood. Um, but um, I know that many of you don't have um, the means to cut them. And uh, so I'm just using a little stretched canvas from uh, the Dollar Tree, and these are very handy for uh, for ornaments. So that's what we'll be using on both of these, and I'm probably going to be doing that more myself because lumber has gone up incredibly. It, it's just terrible. So um, so I'll probably be doing more of these anyway. And what I'm doing here is I'm using some distress ink. And uh, I am um, distressing some, this is actually rice paper, but you could use coffee filters or uh, just any kind of soft paper. Uh, you could even just use a book page. The, the uh, plain side of a book page, I know that there's a few of those in each book, so you could use that. Um, or just anything you want. You could even use copy paper here, but um, so I'm just distressing heavily around the edges. Uh, this is the color corduroy, but you can distress with eyeshadow or um, uh, someone mentioned shoe polish. There's just a, a number of things that you can distress with. And as you can see, I wadded it up because I wanted uh, those little creases to show when I distressed. I wanted some little darker areas because what I'm going for here is texture. And now I'm tearing out some uh, some writing out of, uh, out of an old book page and I'm just tearing a few of those and placing them randomly on my paper. This is all going to be decoupaged and then obviously this is going to be decoupaged onto the uh, to the canvas. And, um, and like I said, I'm just creating some texture here. So I just glue these down. Uh, and then I decided that I wanted a little bit more contrast here. So I antiqued around the edges of, uh, of the rest of them before I glued them down. Because I just felt like it, it needed to uh, have more texture. Uh, this is very random here, and you don't have to worry about placing it any certain way. Uh, you're just going to, you're, we're trying to, um, to make, uh, just give it a lot of contrast because, um, this is going to be a background page and, um, it, just the more you do to layer this up, the better I feel like it looks. So, um. So like I said, I just glue these down after I've uh, antiqued them and I decided to go back here and antique this first one a little bit. You can still do that because uh, this paper is just going to look grungy and that's good. That's the, the look that I'm going for. And I didn't mention that I'm just gluing this here with regular glue stick and 
I actually just got this at the Dollar Tree. Uh, but then once I put the, this, uh, the book pages on, and like I said, just a few is really all you need. Then I just randomly started placing some stamps. And uh, this is a little angel and heart. And, uh, but you can put whatever you want on here because this is really not gonna show that much. You're just trying to create a lot of contrast. And um, so use whatever stamps you have. Uh, I think that one says, Amen. Uh, but it doesn't have to be faith related. If you don't have those stamps, then uh, just stamp you some hearts on there. Or if you don't have stamps at all, just take a, a marker and just write out in cursive. And it doesn't even have to be real writing. Just uh, You're just going to scribble. You can just scribble on it. And, uh, and I have this script stamp here that I use a lot. But as you can see, there's really no particular way of doing this. You just keep adding contrast. You could even decoupage more onto this. Um, I'm keeping mine neutral, so that's why I'm not uh, doing a lot of color here, but I'm just adding a lot of uh, contrast, like I said. And then after I'm happy with my paper, then I just uh, decoupage that on there. And uh, I'm using actually just half uh, Elmer's glue, actually a little bit more Elmer's glue to water. So you can mix up to half and half, uh, but I like to put just a little more glue than, um, I probably do two thirds to one third, uh, one third being water. And so I'm just decoupaging this on and, uh, and then I'm smoothing it out first and then decoupaging it on. And then once that's on, then I just take some tissue wrap, and this is just a natural colored tissue wrap, and uh, and I'm decoupaging that over the front. If you don't have that, uh, then you can always use um, just one layer of a napkin would work. So um, the idea, like I said, is just to layer this on, and now I'm just kind of adding other layers. So I'm just uh, gluing that on and um, this is all dry now so I can just glue that on with hot glue and I'm not worried so much about using um, glue that uh, won't have any thickness to it because like I said I'm layering here so I'm okay with using hot glue and so I just cut that to fit and I'm not worried about the sides here of this I'm just trimming it up somewhat uh, because I'm going to uh, get, I'm going to use some sandpaper and just sand around those edges. And I'm going to sand pretty heavily around the edges because I want to give it somewhat of a distressed look. And uh, although this is not wood, you can kind of still achieve that look around the edges. So, um, like I said, I just uh, use some sandpaper and distress it. These ornaments are a good reason to uh, collect scripture stamps. And I know they're not easy to find, um, but Amazon does have some. Uh, I've probably found uh, maybe about a fourth of mine on Amazon. This is just a Christmas one, obviously. Uh, but, um, and I found a few at Hobby Lobby. Uh, and then, but I have found so many at, at thrift stores. So always watch the craft aisle because uh, that's where I found the majority of my stamps. I think this one I probably got at um, Hobby Lobby. I've had it for years, but I think Hobby Lobby is where I got this one. So what I'm doing here is just uh, adding some layers. So I have a lighter book page from a book that isn't very old and I've distressed around the edges. And then this darker book page is, um, is much darker actually. And that just kind of adds another layer of color. 
and I distressed around that. So I just tear these out, uh, and you don't have to tear them out. You could cut them in a particular shape, uh, but I just tear them out and distress around both, and like I said, that just layers it up and adds more interest. And here I am just adding more layers, and this is actually a hem that I've cut off something. Uh, these work so well to just use your scraps. Uh, so it doesn't have to be lace. I, I like the look of lace on these, but like I said, just use your cloth scraps or your paper scraps. Just kind of create what you like. This is just, uh, this goes well with my tree and I sell these in my store and they seem to go well. And if you've watched me long, you've seen me make these little scrappy bow bows and this is just simply a few strips of fabric that are tied in the center and glued on. And I've used lace here and um, I think I used a little bit of tea towel and um, maybe even some cheesecloth. So you can use any any kind of fabric that you want for these little scrappy bows, but I do like some of the wispy fabric uh, added to them. So as you can see here, I've sanded around these edges and given them a distressed look. And so now I'm taking uh, some of my distress ink and I'm going to distress around these edges because as you can see uh, from the side, you see that white from the, um, the canvas. So uh, I'm just going around it with this distress ink and you won't even be able to tell from the side that this is a canvas. And you can see the difference here. But um, like I said, the distressing really makes a big difference in this. And then once I get it distressed all the way around, and I'm not worried about getting it on my cloth here, because again, that's just going to add to the grungy look of this. And I, and I do like that. So uh, once I get it distressed all the way around, then I'm just going to cut a strip of lace and uh, tie a knot in both ends. And then uh, glue that. Uh, to use as the hanger and uh, again if you've seen me long uh, at all then you know that I like that exposed knot in my string and I almost got this one a little short it could have done with being a little bit longer but it was plenty long enough for me uh, so like I said once the once I tied a knot, knot in each end then I just hot glued that to the front corners of this and that ornament is finished and then I made another one and I'll show the finished product on it uh, I may decide to post that one by itself how I did that one uh, but I didn't want to make this video too long now I'm putting these uh, Christmas ornaments and, and items at the end of my videos that way if you don't want to see those uh, then when once I get done with my thrift flips or whatever I'm doing, uh, then you don't have to watch to the end. And, and uh, that'll just give you the option if you want to see the Christmas items or not. And again, don't forget to check out my sister's channel. And it's called The Paper Trail. Uh, but uh, again, I'll leave that link in the description. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.